good morning and welcome to this edition of Hyclopedia and part two of my tour of Singapore's former east coast before land reclamation. Now my first stop this morning is here at the corner of Marine Parade and Nalo Roads. Believe it or not around 50 years ago this spot played host to the holiday homes of some of Singapore's wealthiest businessmen. Along this stretch of the former coastline there were several luxurious seafront mansions, although all that remains of them today are the former sea walls which you can see here. The decorative motifs in the gate give clues as to what things looked like back then. A palmed fringe beach that stretched for miles along Singapore's south or east coast as it is known locally. Now I know it may be hard to believe given its present state with all this construction going on here and there's HDBs just over the road but luckily for you I have a photograph of this exact spot taken in 1958 by the Royal Air Force and as you can see this wall is clearly visible in the photograph. Pretty cool huh? Also situated along the former East Coast Road is this area known as Siglap. Now this area from Changi Road way up there down to the former coastline which is a bit further over that way was once part of a huge estate owned by the Frankel family. A Jewish family originally from Lithuania who got rich after coming to Singapore via Borneo and Malaysia. And although they uprooted from Singapore and moved to the US after the end of the Second World War, their name lives on at Frankel Avenue here. Another quirky street name related legacy of the Frankels is the Opera Estate. Several streets all named after famous operas on land that was once part of their estate. One really easy way to trace the former coastline of Singapore is via satellite images. You can basically follow the orange rooftops of the landed properties and that will give you a pretty good idea of the former extent of the east coast. Chu Chat Road and the surrounding area is named after Chu Ju Chat or in Mandarin Zhou Ru Chie, a migrant from China who made good in business and ended up owning vast tracts of land in Katong and the East Coast which stretched all the way up to present day Geylang. Now if we look along Ju Chat Road here just down there would have been the coastline a few years ago and for many years there was a jetty at the end of the road that jutted out into the sea.
My next stop on the old coastline is here at the site or the former site of Fort Tanjong Katong. It was built in 1879 to assuage the fears of traders based in Singapore that the Dutch or other European countries may try to take control of Singapore. Although it wasn't much used, the ground was unstable, so much so in fact that every time the guns were fired they had to be recalibrated. Now this meant that the fort got a reputation for being not very good and so it was known in those days as washout fort. The only part of the fort that we can still see is one of the bastions here um, and in those days infantry soldiers would have been inside there looking out through the slit windows and able to protect the walls from any invading soldiers. Um, the guns, the actual guns, would have been further back behind the walls of the fort. Now I'm here on the westernmost tip of Tanjong Ru. Now there are a couple of things that you may find hard to believe about Tanjong Ru. Years and years ago, it was actually just a really, really narrow spit of sand that stuck out into the water. Obviously that was before land reclamation went ahead and it became what it is today, a huge piece of land with lots and lots of condos built all over it. The second is that this area of Tanjong Ru, just up the Geylang River, was once the centre of Singapore's shipbuilding industry. The industry flourished along the banks of this river through to the mid-80s, but once the government embarked upon a plan to clean up polluted waterways within the city limits, that was the end of that. All that remains of it now are the street names and a few of the buildings behind me on the other side of the river. I am so hungry right now. The only trouble is I have no idea where there is anything to eat around Tanjong Ru. So I'm just going to go find the nearest place. Wish me luck. Okay guys, I'm here on the last stop of my tour of Singapore's old east coastline. 
which is Beach Road which as you may have guessed from the name gives away the fact that this area once hugged the coastline. In fact Beach Road was one of the first ever places in Singapore to undergo land reclamation way back in 1840. Then it underwent a second round in the 1880s before the final and biggest round through the 60s to the 80s that left the former waterfront properties along this road around 500 meters from the sea. Now there aren't too many historic areas left on Beach Road but the one behind me, Kampong Glam, is pretty cool although I do plan to cover that in a separate video in the future. So instead I'm going to visit one of the other historic sites just down the road. Now here's something I never thought I'd ever hear myself say. It's time for Tiffin at the Raffles Hotel. But first, I need to get changed. Ta -da! So let's go inside and check it out. Built in the 1830s by Robert Scott, Raffles Hotel started life as one of the many luxurious residential homes built on Beach Road back when it was known as 20 House Street by the local Chinese community. In 1878, with demand for hotel rooms rising, Dr. Charles Emerson turned it into Emerson's Hotel. Before it became the 10 bedroom Raffles Hotel in 1887, when the Sarkis brothers, Armenians from Jolfa in Persia, took on the lease. They eventually rebuilt the hotel, the main building as we know it, opening in 1899. We're done with the history lesson. Let's go and get some tiffin. Now that was a thoroughly enjoyable, although rather expensive lunch. I would have loved to have taken some of those pastries home with me, but they're a tad pricey. So instead, I'm going to get some traditional Chinese pastries. Still super tasty, but a lot, lot cheaper. Let's go inside. This one is salty, right? This one's salty. I got some sweet cakes, some salty cakes. We're going to take them home and enjoy them with my family. So we're that's it for today and that's the end of my east coast exploration i hope you enjoyed it it's been a lot of fun making it although pretty exhausting too so i'm gonna wrap up now i'm gonna head home and i'm gonna enjoy a happy new year and i wish a happy new year to all you guys out there too i may take a week's break over the new year because i've got a project that i've been working on for ages and i really want to try and finish it more news about that in the future so in the meantime if you like this video give me a thumbs up 
don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to click notifications if you can't get by on a Saturday morning without my latest adventure. That's it for today guys. Happy New Year again. Take it easy. Over and out.